What's up, Cal Gang? Welcome back to some mechanics and materials. So let's solve this problem. We're trying to find the minimum B, which is the base of this beam, allowed, so that we don't break our bending stress maximum of 10 MPa. So you see we have this, uh, this you know, diagram going on here. We have this beam. It's being posted up at A by a pin, and it's being supported at B. Um, so there's two meters here, two meters here, and then there's this distributed load. So our goal is to find the maximum B, and how are we going to do that? Well, we're going to be using the equation that the maximum bending stress, which is given to us, is equal to moment times Y over moment of inertia. So which parts of these are going to include B? Well, moment of inertia has to do with our cross-sectional area, which has B in it. So this is going to be where V shows up in the equation. So let's go ahead and solve for that. So the things we need to find, first of all, is where moment is maximized, because we know where bending stress is maximum of 10 MPa, and we need to maximize our moment to find, you know, basically, where is the moment going to be the biggest so that we can use that. So let's go ahead and draw a moment body diagram. That's what we need to do when we need to find the maximum moment. So if we want to find the moment body diagram, we need to first draw a force body diagram and figure out what our support reactions are. So we know that A of Y, or A is going to have a reaction in the Y direction. It's also going to have a reaction in the X direction. But it's going to be cool to zero, as you can tell, because there's no other forces acting in the X direction and around equilibrium. So this 500 newton meter, newton per meter force is being applied over two meters. So we can go ahead and draw that halfway between the two meters. It's just 1,000 newtons. And then B is going to have its support reaction to B of Y. So then we have two unknowns, so we can't use some of the forces in the Y, but we can do some of the moments. So let's solve for B of Y, some of the moments A, set that equal to zero, and let's add them up. So we're taking the moment around A, so we have a 1,000 Newton force pushing us clockwise. So we're going to need to subtract 1,000 Newtons times its distance away from A, which is one meter. Then B of Y is pushing us counterclockwise, we're going to add B of Y times its distance, which is four meters. Solving for B of Y, you get that B of Y is equal to 250 Newtons. Then, now that we know V of Y, we can find A of Y, some of the forces in the Y, is equal to zero. It's equal to, right, A of Y minus 1,000 plus B of Y, which is 250. So you solve for A of Y, and you get the A of Y equal to 750 newtons. Okay, so we have all of this. Now we need to draw a Roman diagram. Or, yeah, that's going to take a little while. So let's first find the equations for a moment diagram. So let's start with um, let's start with from 0 to 2 meters, right? Uh, we're going to need to break this into two sections because there's a break that happens here, basically, where the, the distributed load cancels out. So let's look from 0 to 2 meters. So what's our shape going to look like? Well, we're going to have this, and that distance is going to be x. So of course we have that distributed load. Oops, I draw that in. It's distributed 500 newton meters, newton per meter, I mean. And then what forces do we have? Well, we have A of Y, and this is equal to 750 newtons. And then we have shear pointing downward and moment pointing this direction counterclockwise. So if we want to correct an equation for moment one, let's label this moment one. Some of the moments around that point set it equal to zero. So we have moment one going counterclockwise, so we're just going to add that in. Then we have a 750 pushing us counterclockwise, or pushing us clockwise. We're going to subtract 750 times its distance away, which is x. Okay, then we have this 500 newton meter force, or distributed force, that's pushing us clockwise, so we need to add that. So the magnitude of that force is going to be 500 newton meters times x, right? Because newtons per meter times x meters is going to give us the force. Then we still need to multiply it by the distance away from our moment. And so that distance is just going to be half of x. So we're going to do x divided by 2. And all that's equal to 0. Now I'm going to need my taper back. So you solve for moment 1 here. And you're going to get that moment 1. It's equal to negative 250. Right? Because this will become... The moment's going to move over. It's going to be negative 250x squared plus 750x. All right, so this is what our graph is going to look like between 0 and 2 meters. So then we need to figure out what it's going to look like between 2 meters and 4 meters. So let's do 2 is less than x is less than 4 meters. So now our diagram is going to go a little further. So we're going to be here. And now 
the distributed load is only going to act here. And we can basically break this distributed load into just one force again, now that it's acting here. So we know it's 1,000 newtons. Now we come past it, so we're going to have our shear again. This is V. This is moment. We still have our 750. This is one meter apart. And then this is X distance. So what's our equation going to look like for a moment here? Sit down. All right, so we're going to be, right, sum of the moments is equal to zero. So let's add them up, right? We have the moments going counterclockwise. 750 is going to be negative. 750 times this distance of X. Then this 1,000 Newton force is pushing us the other way. So we're going to add 1,000 counterclockwise. And then what's its distance away? Well, it's not just X because it's a meter apart from the end. So if we can find this distance from here to here by taking all of x and then subtracting one meter, so we're gonna do x minus y. And that's the whole equation. Uh, so then we're gonna set that equal to zero. Then all you're gonna do is solve for a moment here. So I'll make sure I'm doing it right. Yeah, so, yeah. So do this and you get moment two, which is this new one is equal to negative 250x plus 100, or plus 1,000. So we'll notice that moment one is a, par a, a parabola, but moment two is gonna be a straight line. So that now let's graph these functions and find out where it's maximized. So let's draw our in here. Here's x in meters. Now we're gonna go to four, that would be two there. And this is moment in, in meters. So now we need to draw this. So we're starting from zero. We're going to use this function from zero to two. So obviously this is going to start at the origin because x of zero, or zero is equal to zero. If you plug in x is equal to zero. And then where are we going to end? Well, we can plug in points basically. Uh, so we can find moment one, but we can plug in x is equal to two. And if you plug in x is equal to two, you get that we reach a, a 500. So we're going to end here at 500. But what's going to happen in between, right? We don't know if we're going to have a local maximum. Maybe we're going to have a local minimum. We don't know what it's going to look like. But we know, um, we can look and think back to our algebra. We have a negative on our x squared function. And when we have a negative, that means that we're going to be concave downward for our parabola. So we're going to be concave down. So we don't know where this point is. It could be before the local max. It could be after the local max. And so if you think back to calculus 1, where can we find the local max? Well, let's take the derivative. So m1 prime, right, we're taking the derivative. And what m1 prime gives you is actually the shear. So we're finding the shear. We could have wrote this earlier, but we're just finding the same thing. So that two is gonna come down, you're gonna get negative 500x plus 750. And then if you remember back to calculus, if you set the derivative equal to zero, that's where you find your local max or your local min. So we know it's gonna be a local max, so let's set it equal to zero. So it's gonna be zero is equal to negative 500x plus 750. So what you do here is you solve for x, and you get that x is equal to 1.5 meters. So this tells us that we have a local max at 1.5. Let's draw in 1.5 here. And where's that local max going to occur? Well, we can go back here, and we can plug in moment 1, but let's plug in 1.5 for x. So of course we're going to get negative 250, you know, 1.5 squared minus plus 700, 750, I mean, you know, 1.5. So for this, you get that this is 562. So we're actually above here, 562.5. So now we can figure out what this graph looks like. It's going to be a parabola with a local max right there. Okay, then all I have to do is plot moment two. So let me get rid of all this. So moment two is just a straight line downward. So we can start. Our, we can find our starting point by plugging in x is equal to two. So of course, 250 times two minus plus 100 plus 1,000 is equal to 500. So we're starting at 500. And if you plug in four for x, we're gonna end in zero. So it's just gonna be a straight line from here to here. And so this is our moment diagram, and we can see that maximum moment, right, moment max, is equal to 562.5 newton meters. All right, so that's what we spent all this time solving for. So let's go ahead and solve for this now. So we're finding uh, the maximum V yield out. So we're gonna go here. We know MPA now. We know the maximum bending stress. We know moment. 
we can find y and we need to find the moment of inertia. So let's solve for the moment of inertia. So we just have a rectangle and the moment of inertia for a rectangle is 112 base height cubed. So the base of this rectangle is b and the height of this rectangle is 1.5b. And raise that to the third. You're going to find that basically this gives you that i is equal to 0 0.28125 b to the fourth meters. Okay, so we can plug all of this right into our equation. So let's go with the max bending stress. And we know that it's equal to 10 MPa, so let's just put 10 MPa here, so 10 times 10 to the sixth. And then the equation for bending stress is the maximum moment. So we're going to do 562.5. And then what is y? So y is the furthest distance out from the center's mass. So if we look at our shape here, we know the center of mass, y bar, is equal to one point, or it's, it's half of 1.5 here, right? Half of the height of a rectangle is where the center of mass is. So 0.75b is the center of mass. And that's the distance, right, from the bottom of the shape, or the bottom top of the shape, to there. So that's just going to be our y bar, and our maximum stress occurs at the top of the bottom. So it's 0.75b. Then our bottom goes our inertia, so 0 0.28125, and then b to the fourth. All right, so then this b is going to cancel out with this b. It's going to give us b to the third now. And then we can solve for b. Oh, I shouldn't have done that, just in case people are skipping forward in the video, right? I'm just going to keep it here, b, b to the fourth. So now we can basically, that's going to cancel out. Move the numbers around. You're going to get 6, 6, 6, 7 is equal to 1 over b to the third. And then now you solve this. We go up here, you're going to get that b is equal to 0 0.0531 meters, or you could say equivalently 53.1 millimeters. And there we go. Solve the problem. So pretty cool, right? Just about, you know, solving for different unknowns. So if you're having trouble with uh, chapter 4, all the bending. Uh, maximum bending stress and all that. Feel free to check out my channel. This is like my 50th video I've solved from this chapter. So yeah, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.